Today we've got another yeast shootout and this one is the Mangroves Jack Mead Yeast, the MO5, versus the Lauven EC1118. Let's get started. Let's talk about these two yeasts that we're shooting out today. If you want to know the exact rules about the shootout, go check out the link down in the description. There's a video called Yeast Shootout Rules. Let me give you the uh, characteristics of each yeast. So the Mangroves MO5 yeast, this is a mead yeast, specific mead yeast, um, and it has a high uh, ABV tolerance of 18%. It is a high, has a high flocculate, flocculation um, capability, essentially. It's got a fast fermenter. It gets up to 18%, so most of the time those high ABV um, yeasts are fast fermenters. And uh, I, you know, I think that it's going to be, well, it says on here, a high ester producing strain uh, conferring flesh, or fr fresh floral esters, especially when fermented cool. This thing has a temperature range of, I believe it was 58 to 86, and I'll make sure and put that here. The EC118 is very similar, which is why I'm putting these two against each other. It has a ABV tolerance of 18%. This is a champagne yeast, and um, it also has a similar temperature range, we'll get there, but it is a high flocculator, has a high flocculation capability. Um, it is a fast fermenter, Oftentimes you use it for um, stuck fermentation, stuff like that, since it is such a high ABV tolerance. And the temperature range on this one is even a little more vast. I think it's 45 to 86. Both of them are very similar. We'll find out if they have the same characteristics um, for a mead. Now, I've gone ahead and mixed all of my ingredients, um, and I did this off camera because it's pretty simple, and I put them into these two different gallons. I'm uh, ultimately making a half gallon of each mead, um, and you can see here that this is a half gallon. The starting gravity for both of them is 1.100, so both of them will be able to ferment through everything. We're gonna see which yeast is better for this specific recipe. My recipe I'm using today is 1.8 pounds of orange blossom honey, one gallon of spring water, and then two grams of each one of these yeasts. I'm not giving them any nutrients or anything like that. Again, go look, check out the rules if you wanna know. So uh, I've gone ahead and um, rehydrated them both in some water here that's been gone for probably 15 minutes since I mixed everything. I'm gonna go ahead and pour each one in. This is the Mangroves Jack right here. All right, I'll put my information on these to make sure I don't get them mixed up. And I will be giving you updates on how they ferment. If, they, um, if one's faster than the other, gravity readings, all that stuff. So with that, let the shootout begin between these two powerful yeasts. Here's an update on both of them. The Mangrove and the EC1118 are both uh, fermenting effectively. You can see them on here. There's a little layer of what's yeast. And if I get close enough, you might be able to see some bubbling. But um, they're moving a little bit slow, but they are fermenting. Here's an update on fermentation. The mangrove and the uh, EC1118 are both at 1.060 after about six days of fermenting. Um, and you can see they look very similar. The thing that I noticed is when I moved some out, mangrove out, it really, uh, it degassed a little more vigorously than the EC1118. It has been a total of 27 days since these both started fermenting. Now I have them here. You can tell they're in different glasses. That's because um, I went ahead and moved them over. I was trying to do something else with a different project and I needed the glass carboys. And these have finished fermenting. And what I mean by finished fermenting is not, it's uh, both of them are not at 1.000. So the, um, the EC118 here, is at 1.000. It leveled out from our starting gravity. However, the mangrove um, is at 1.004. Now I say these are finished fermenting um, and there's a good chance that this thing might slowly eat through that last 0 0.004 gravity and it might, you know, but uh, I think after 27 days for a yeast that is can go, that can go up to 18% and is toted as a very strong and fast fermenter, it probably should have gone through all of that uh, gravity pretty quickly, but who knows. 
So per usual, for this yeast shootout to work, I am gonna take my little form here, which has a bunch of, um, basically, it's a score sheet, so it has a bunch of categories, and I'm gonna go through and score this, and then I'll tell you some notes about each one. So let me go ahead and do that real fast. Okay, I finished my score sheets. Let me go ahead and taste test and then or tell you what I'm tasting. So I'm gonna start with the EC1118. Smelling it, it is um, a little darker. It doesn't have a very bright fruity, as bright of a fruity smell to me. Um, it's a little more like a blood orange. Of course, this is orange blossom honey that we used, so we are guaranteed to get orange, but it's a little darker, more muted. The honey character is slightly there, it's um, it's just not very bright. And I'm using that word because I'll, I'll talk about it in a moment. The mangrove is va uh, vastly different in that respect. So I think the, the taste of it, uh, it has a, a decent honey presence. It's just a different, um, different floral type. I don't know what, I, uh, what the difference, why, well, actually I'll talk about it in a second, why I think this one's different, but. There are some different floral notes I'm getting from this. And I, I wrote down some over here on nose bouquet. I said uh, like lavender, a rose, um, blood orange smell, stuff like that that it seems not the same as what I was getting elsewhere. Um, one thing I do like about this one, it has a, a really nice body. The very full body, it has a little tannic value, like it has been aged with some oak or something like that. Um, it is a little yeasty tasting to me, even though it has been moved over. Uh, there's, there's different. I'll give a hypothesis here in a second. Uh, here is the mangrove. The smell, or smelling it, it definitely smells brighter. You get, uh, to me, a true orange smell. I also wrote down here like orange and pear. I'm getting like a pear, apple, that similar smell to me. Yeah, this one, um, the orange just really pops. There is more bright floral notes coming from it. So it's interesting. Um, so let's taste it. It's definitely, definitely a little sweeter. It tastes more juicy-esque, and I wrote that on here. Uh, it has a lighter body, but it has a, a little smoother finish to me. And the alcohol, the alcohol in both of these is not super present. Like it's not, the burn is not there, which is nice. Yeah, I like, I like the, um, the brightness from the honey that I'm getting. It's keeping the uh, very bright floral notes, the orange, it's not the same as this blood orange darkness. Um, I think that the honey presence needs brightness to really pop and um, not that you can't have a warm honey flavor that pops. This one's just way juicier. It's interesting. Doesn't have as much of a yeasty taste, which this one could turn out to be like that, maybe with more time if the yeast fall out the suspension. One thing to note about the clarities of these, if I can get a good shot here, you can see this is the mangrove right here and this is the EC1118. The, um, the mangrove's a little clearer and I think that's part of the yeasty taste that we're getting. But what's interesting, with this one ending at 1.000, sorry, 1.004, and this one ending at 1.000, you would think this one, be, one would be clear because the, uh, it's finished fermenting, quote. However, it's not really all that clear, which I find to be interesting. Here's my hypothesis, and then I'll tell you the exact scores. My hypothesis is that this EC1181118 is a champagne yeast, which is guaranteed to ferment fast, efficiently, and to um, burn through high gravities. And it's meant for that, which is not a bad thing. But in the process of quick, uh, quick fermentations, you can often lose honey character, honey presence, um, and the, really the, the things that make a mead pop sometimes. Whereas the mangrove, which is a mead yeast, specific mead yeast, is more so intended for um, mead, which I think their, their goal is to uh, retain honey character, floral notes, fruity notes, maybe smoky notes, whatever you're using. So I do believe the fermentation was uh, maybe a little bit slower. And I can tell you some of the gravity readings. So this one, the EC1118, started off at 1.100, 
By day six, it was 1.060. By day 10, it was 1.040. By day 17, it was 1.002, sorry, 1.012. And by day 23, it was 1.000. The uh, mangrove was 1.100 to start. By day six, it was 1.060, so they lined up in that world. By day 10, it was 1.044, so it started to lag behind, get a little bit slower. By day, uh, I gotta get my numbers right here, 17, it was 1.020, which is again, lagging behind the uh, EC1118. And day 23, when this one had finished, this is at 1.008. So that goes to show that this thing's fermenting a little slower. Again, this one might finish at 1.000, it's just taking quite some time, because we again are at day 27. Um, and I can give an update on that too in the future. The scores for both of these, um, I will throw them up on the screen. Uh, right now I'll do a little side by side to show you. So for the, the mangrove, I gave color and appearance uh, eight out of 10 for the Lavin EC1118, I gave it seven out of 10. For the nose bouquet, the mangrove was 13 out of 15. And for the uh, nose bouquet on the EC1118 was 11 out of 15. It was, it's, uh, wasn't as mead smelling to me. Flavor for mangrove was 13 out of 15. Flavor for the EC1118 was 11 out of 15. Finish, mangrove, nine out of 10. Um, Finish Lavin was seven out of ten. Honey character presence mangrove was nine out of ten. Honey character presence Lavin was six out of ten. Mouthfeel body eight out of ten. Mouthfeel body Lavin was nine out of ten. The overall scores I gave the mangrove a sixty out of seventy, and the Lavin EC one 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 eight a seventy, or sorry, fifty one out of seventy. Both of these they're not bad by any means. They need more age, like every single mead, every single wine, every single beer needs age. That's just generally how life works. And um, if I were to pick a yeast to use, I would actually go with this mangrove one. Even though it can be a little more expensive, um, it does make a nice mead. And I'll be using some of the meat, the packets I have to make bigger batches in the future. The good news for you guys is I take these, now that this is done, and I put them up above me. You can see it, maybe in the shot, I have a couple different ones around. And I will let these age for, you know, three, four, five, six months, and I'll come back and do a taste test again. So this shootout will happen again in the future with some other ones. But the conclusive for right now results of this yeast shootout are that the mangrove is the better yeast in my opinion. Again, my opinion, not necessarily the world's. So please don't take it as uh, end all be all that you should never use the EC1118. That's not true. I use it all the time. It does a lot of great things. I just think the mangrove was better in this case. I hope you'll check out some of the other uh, yeast shootouts I have. I also have a series called Can It Be a Mead and um, Mead Theory videos, as I like to call them. A bunch of stuff about mead making. It's a lot of fun. If you like this video, um, go ahead and, and share it. Go ahead and hit like. Go ahead and hit subscribe because all that stuff really helps support the channel. And um, YouTube, YouTube has an algorithm thing where if you like the video and you comment, then it helps to promote the video. And if you, if you will help me continue to get the word out about mead making, I think the world of mead making will continue to grow. So whether that's liking, commenting, sharing my videos, or any of the other mead making content uh, YouTube channels, uh, I think you can support the channel, support the, um, the whole congregation of community of mead making by sharing stuff. So thanks for watching. The shootout is done for now. In the future, we're gonna find out if this is still true, as well as if any of the other are true. There are three other shootouts on the channel. Go check those out for the other ones. Have a great day. See you next time and cheers. Thank you.